Hello, my name is Anna and I love trying vintage recipes. So today I'm making three side dishes from 1967. Today's recipes come to us from Betty Crocker's Hostess Cookbook. And I will talk more about this book a little bit later. And I can't wait. I love side dishes. In fact, sometimes when I go to restaurants and I'm looking at the menu and I think something looks really tasty and I wanna order it, I have to stop and think and ask myself, is it the side dishes that come with this menu item that I'm really after or is it the main dish? So I have to check in with myself, make sure I'm not just you know wanting the mac and cheese and the green beans. Thanksgiving is the Super Bowl of side dishes if you ask me. Yes, we have turkey. Maybe you have a ham, depending on your family. But the sides, mashed potatoes and gravy, sweet potatoes, cranberries, stuffing, green bean casserole, all the things. A lot of us tend to kind of stick to the same things year after year. It's a special occasion. Maybe you get to eat those particular side dishes just once or twice a year. But I thought I would give a couple of the side dishes in this cookbook a try. This book is all about entertaining. And with Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up, I thought maybe we could use a couple of twists on old favorites or some new ideas. Ideas. I'm trying out this spinach apple toss and I am gonna make the dressing first. I'm gonna make a full recipe of the dressing. I am not gonna make the full salad because it's just gonna be me who's eating this. And the dressing is very simple. It is mayonnaise and orange juice concentrate, like the frozen stuff. I do not buy this very often. I kind of forget about it. Definitely something I had growing up sometimes, as you can see. The concentrate is most of the way thawed. There's still a little bit of frozen stuff in there. So I'm just gonna kind of try to break that up a little bit as I whisk. I think this is gonna make like a creamy, kind of like sweet sour dressing. This is, that's what I think anyway, we'll see. It couldn't get simpler, it's two ingredients. I'm gonna store this just in a little jar here. And I am just gonna let this hang out in the fridge until I'm ready to assemble the salad. My dressing has just kind of been hanging out while I prepped my other ingredients. And that is spinach and some chopped bacon, a thinly sliced tart red apple. I used a Macintosh apple, just use what you want or what you have. So now we're ready to put this all together into a beautiful salad. I just stemmed my spinach and just cut it into bite-sized pieces. It says combine spinach, apples, and bacon. So let's do the apples. And I kind of want the bacon on top, I think. So let's, let's do some dressing. Actually, I mean, doesn't that look pretty? <laughs> this is gonna be my lunch today, so I'm excited. Almost looks like honey mustard. It's like a nice color and everything. I have a feeling this might also be very good with kale. I keep, <laughs> I keep throwing the spinach out. Kale, I like it, I really do. And it holds up very well to being pre-dressed. So if this is something you wanted to make for, let's say Thanksgiving, you know, I personally am a fan of making things ahead of time, like when I can for Thanksgiving, just because the day of is kind of like full of butter and steam and heat and pressure and ah, it can get a little crazy. So if I can do something ahead of time, I will. Let's sprinkle a little bacon on that and then I can give it a taste. That looks pretty good. I did end up adding just a little bit more spinach because I think I kind of overdressed this. It smells really good. It smells really fresh and like a, has a nice like sweet and sour kind of like tangy scent to it. I think the combination of ingredients is really good. I like fruit in salads, especially like a tart apple. Let's get it all. Mmm. Okay, that dressing is so simple and it is so delicious. It's got like this very bright pop of orange flavor, but it's creamy. It goes really well with those tart apples and the spinach and then the saltiness of the bacon. I feel like salads are usually not the bell of the ball <laughs> when it comes to Thanksgiving, but this one could be. If you want the addition of something like fresh, if you want a few more vegetable options, I think this would be a really good one to go with, or you could just eat it for lunch like I am. Next, I'm trying out this cheesy potato casserole. And this starts with instant mashed potatoes. Not everyone's favorite, but these are very gussied up. I think they're going to be delicious. Prepare potato buds as directed on package. Uh, this is what I got, these Idahoan instant mashed potatoes. I have read that people don't like these as much, but this is what I could get my hands on. <laughs> so I'm supposed to prepare those according to the package directions. That means combine water and I'm cutting this in half. I will have the full recipe in the description down below. So I've got my water, I've got milk, butter. Ooh, Thanksgiving is the butter holiday. I was also supposed to add some salt, um, but there are a couple of adjustments to be made. So I'm adding half the amount of salt that the recipe calls for, and then 
half a teaspoon of garlic salt. And this has come to a gentle boil, so now I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat and add my potato flakes. I'm making enough for four servings. The full recipe directs you to make enough for eight servings. Okay, see that? See what they're doing? They're rehydrating, they're becoming mashed potatoes. Oh, right, wow, magic. So now that we have our mashed potatoes, it's time to start gussying them up. So that starts with some fresh parsley, those nice green little flecks, and some cheese. This is just shredded cheddar cheese, the cheesy and the cheesy potato casserole. So I'm just gonna stir that to combine. My cheese is all melted, so this goes into a little casserole dish. If you're making a full recipe, it says a two quart dish. Let's smooth that out. This is all where it needs to be. I'm gonna set this aside and get to work on the topping. The topping starts with cornflakes. Specifically, the recipe says country cornflakes, and that is not a cereal I can find around here. So I'm doing my very best, and I'm just going with regular cornflakes. Maybe you can find it, but I can't. We got butter, softened butter that I softened just a little too much maybe, but it'll be fine. And a few seasonings. We have some salt, oops, some paprika, and a little bit of dry mustard. I love a crispy, crunchy, buttery topping on a casserole. I mean, who doesn't? Okay, brought my casserole back in. I ended up just going in with my hands to mix this. It was much easier. I'm gonna use my hands to sprinkle it on top anyway. <laughs> Yes, I actually did cut this topping recipe in half, but it seems like a lot. I don't care, <laughs> it doesn't bother me. I think it's gonna make this extra delicious. All right, look at this beauty. So this is gonna go into a 325 degree oven for about 20 minutes. We got some toasty goodness right here. Also look at this super cute pot holder that a viewer sent me. Adorable, adorable and retro. Thank you so much, Aggie. Perfect. <laughs> This smelled very cheesy and toasty when it was baking in the oven, and it couldn't be simpler. You start with instant mashed potatoes. You could do this with regular mashed potatoes too, or better yet, if you have mashed potatoes left over from a meal or from Thanksgiving, here's a way to kind of like spice them up and like repurpose them a little bit. <laughs> okay, we're gonna dig in there. It's still pretty warm. Mmm. oh yes. I can smell the paprika and like the garlic salt. I gotta get some of that cornflake topping. Very delicious. Dare I say a little salty? Might be a little bit too salty for me, actually. I think I would maybe not put the salt in the topping or like reduce the amount. Maybe I would completely just like not use any regular salt when I'm preparing the instant mashed potatoes and just put that garlic salt in there. I think it's enough. You know me, I usually say that these things are not seasoned enough, but this is like very seasoned. It's delightful, it really is. I think this is like special enough to serve at a holiday or a dinner, but easy enough to serve every day as well. Now I'm gonna try this golden gourmet squash. And this recipe starts with Hubbard squash. I'll include the full recipe in the description down below, but I'm actually cutting this down by, I'm dividing it by four. So this is three cups of Hubbard squash that I'm placing in some boiling salted water. And then I'm supposed to cover and let this cook for about 15 minutes. So this is a Hubbard squash. Sometimes you find these and they're gigantic. They're very, very large. I managed to find one that was kind of small and I even only ended up using half of this. I prepared the squash, as you can see, I put a towel down on my countertop and I have a large cutting board. You just wanna be very careful when you're trying to cut open something like a squash. They're very hard, you know, slippery surfaces are not your friend. So I always like to put a towel down, like it did for the pumpkin terrine, in order to stabilize everything. So you just wanna cut this open very carefully, scoop out the seeds, and then peel it and dice it. And this is the peeler I use. This is like my favorite style of peeler. I use it for potatoes, I use it for apples, all kinds of things. You know, this made peeling the squash very easy. So I'll link this in the description down below. My squash is nice and tender after I cooked for about 12 minutes. I think my pieces were kind of small. So it, it cooked a little bit faster, but it's nice and tender. So I drained the liquid away and now it's time to add the other ingredients and mash it all up. And that is butter and sour cream. I don't know that I've ever had mashed kind of squash dish with sour cream. Maybe I have and I didn't know it, but I am interested to see what kind of creaminess and flavor this brings. Finely chopped onion. Nervous about this because you don't cook the onion, like you don't saute it or anything, it just goes in raw, but it is very small pieces. So maybe it'll soften in the oven. 
some salt, pepper, and some milk. All right, so my squash is pretty smooth. Now I'm heaping that into, as it says in the recipe, a casserole dish. Mine is pretty small because as I said, I cut this recipe way, way down. It makes 12 servings normally and I don't need quite that much right now. Look at how <laughs> the casserole dish almost matches the color of the squash. It really is golden, like it says in the recipe. So this goes into a 400 degree oven for 20 to 30 minutes. Will you look at how vibrant this squash is? Oh my gosh. And I have this little pink dish that I'm gonna try some in and I kind of want to see the colors together. I think it's gonna look so nice. It's like a sunset. <laughs> Impressions, this smells like tangy and cheesy and I'm, I'm excited about it. Squash kind of rides that sweet savory line, you know? But a lot of times when I see squash at maybe like a Thanksgiving celebration or something, it's more sweet, you know, it's butter, it's maple syrup, it's brown sugar, that kind of thing. This is like savory town, reading savory just by the scent. Mmm, okay. It almost tastes a little bit cheesy and there's no cheese in it. Hmm. Taste-wise, it's, it's very tasty. Texture-wise, also pretty good, but the onions, I think I would saute them in butter, maybe just a little bit before I put them in the casserole, or if you wanted to leave them out, maybe you could do some onion powder or dehydrated onions or something like that. I almost feel like if you took this and thinned it down even a little bit more, you could add macaroni to it and kind of make like almost like a macaroni and cheese kind of situation with squash. It is really good and it's really colorful. <laughs> I just love the color of this. Let's get into this gorgeous cookbook. Betty Crocker's Hostess Cookbook was published in 1967. And if you watched the series Mad Men, you might recognize this because it does make an appearance in the background a couple of times. I think Betty Draper even cooks a very important meal for Don Draper's co-workers, his boss, etc., whatever, from this particular book. Side note, I love it when I watch a TV show and I see cookbooks in the background. One time I even managed to spot a copy of Fondue is In in the background of the Mary Tyler Moore show. If I can find that screenshot that I took, I will insert it here. Needless to say, I was very excited. <laughs> Betty Crocker cookbooks from this era are some of my favorites because I think the illustrations are so beautiful. Let's talk about the cover. Can you say dream house? Look at this. And then even the back cover has some gorgeous houses on it. It's like a cute little town. There's a church. I mean, dreamy, just dreamy. Oh, and I really love the tagline at the end of this. It says a wealth of ideas for today's entertaining. We are greeted. This one is not an illustration. This is a photograph of a beautiful bouquet of flowers made of vegetables. <laughs> Oh, I see a lemon in there too, so fruits and vegetables. So not only is this book jam-packed with recipes for entertaining, I mean, it even has a whole guide on planning parties. One of my favorite parts, table settings. Look, it's hard to choose, but I think that one might be my favorite. It kind of like coordinates with the cover of the book as well. There's a good mix of both illustrations and photographs in this, but I love the headers of each of these like little sections. Oh, I really liked this one too. A very appropriate for this time of year, fall harvest, French formality. Look at the dessert for that menu, that bomb rose. I mean, that makes an impression. And those bonbon cookies too. Mm. The squash recipe came from this fall ham buffet. And I just love the flowers and the leaves from this one. I think they're so pretty. This cookbook just has a menu for every occasion and I love a menu. <laughs> and then they also have dishes and menus for each meal. So maybe you're having a dinner buffet, but maybe you're having some bright little brunches and lunches. You know, just a bright little brunch and lunch. <laughs> There's so much in here. I wanna show all of it, but this video would be so long. <laughs> You'll also, and this is very common, in like Betty Crocker cookbooks and Pillsbury cookbooks and all kinds of cookbooks, you'll find some recipes that show up in multiple places in multiple books. A good example of that is this particular cookie. Those are cream wafers. And I think I've even mentioned, I love cream wafers. And this is the very same recipe that appears in Betty Crocker's cookie book. You know, my, my tip top very favorite that will be making another appearance this Christmas. So keep an eye out for that. There's even a menu in here for a wedding reception. So if you want want to host a wedding reception for someone if you want to bake them this fancy cake. I really enjoy this particular chapter that is called Spur of the Moment Dinners. 
because sometimes you just have people who show up or maybe you've invited someone at the last minute. So this chapter is full of things, pantry recipes, pantry shelf recipes, recipes from frozen items, things that you can put together in a hurry. This morning coffee break, I feel like I've seen those plates like everywhere. Did any of you have those plates when you were a young newlywed or when you were maybe a kid? Let me know. I love to hear what kind of patterns and things people had on their plates. I could go on and on about this cookbook, but I think I need to take some time to talk about the recipes I tried today. Let's start with this cheesy potato casserole. That was delicious. I know that it was made from instant mashed potatoes, but it still tasted so good. I mean, those instant mashed potatoes were very, very smooth, so that helped. But, you know, it really took something that was kind of everyday and maybe a little bit plain, and it just, it really leveled it up with a couple of ingredients. And in my opinion, it might have been just like a little bit too salty. After I ate a little bit more of it, I decided that that salt was coming from the topping, not so much the potatoes, but like the cornflake topping. So if I were to make that recipe again, I would leave the additional salt out of the topping. I put the other seasonings in there. It was just like maybe a touch little over the edge for, with the salt for me. But otherwise I thought it was so good. You could also do this with your homemade mashed potatoes if you prefer that, or if you have leftover mashed potatoes, you don't know what to do with them. I know there's a lot of ways to repurpose mashed potatoes, but you know, this would be a great, a great one to try. Just add a couple of extra little things here and there, and it really makes it into something special. So moving on to the spinach apple toss. That was such a nice surprise. The recipe itself is pretty simple. I kind of focused on the dressing here. When I see a salad like this that makes a big quantity and it's it's made with just like spinach or greens or whatever, I tend to make the dressing separately and then just kind of like make myself a small salad because if I dress all of those greens, they're gonna go to waste. There's like not enough people here to have eight servings of this spinach apple toss. That dressing was such a nice surprise. It was just mayonnaise and orange juice concentrate. That's it. Had that like punch of orange. It had like a nice, sweet tanginess. It was kind of like a sweet and sour dressing almost. Really, really good. I could see that dressing on a lot of different things. This one is a spinach-based salad, but I think I also mentioned kale. I think it could also be really good on broccoli, like a broccoli, a cold broccoli salad. I think that would be something to try. The combination of flavors on this one was just so wonderful. You have your nice green spinach, those tart red apples, and then the saltiness of the bacon and that creamy dressing, like all of it was an A+. I have some of the dressing in the fridge right now and I'm definitely gonna make a few more salads from it. And then finally, we have the gourmet golden squash. Wow, that was so good. It tasted cheesy. Normally I'm used to like more of a sweeter kind of squash dish, but this was so tasty and so vibrant. I mean, I know I've had Hubbard squash before, but I think a lot of times, maybe me personally, and maybe you find this of yourself, you gravitate more towards butternut squash or acorn squash. They're like a little bit easier to manage. That Hubbard squash was the smallest one I could find. Usually they are a lot larger than that. And I only ended up using half of it for this recipe because I cut this down to three servings from 12. Like I was kind of researching how to buy Hubbard squash, where to buy it. Some of the things I read said that like some grocery stores actually sell it already cut and in like wedges and stuff because it is so large. I wasn't able to find it like that, but if you can find it like that, I mean, do it because wearing a Hubbard squash, not not tops on my list of things that I absolutely want to do. You just have to take a little extra care and patience because you don't want to like hurt yourself. If you're going to go with like the whole Hubbard squash and you're going to cut it open and, and prep it, just like give yourself a little bit of extra time. But the flavor was so, so good. And when I cut the squash open, it had a little bit of a different scent to it. It was almost like a cucumber, more so than I would get from like a butternut or an acorn squash. So the gourmet golden squash, I loved the color of it. I loved the texture of it. The only change that I would make is I would probably saute those onions in butter. I think I said that and, or just do like onion powder or something. You need the onion flavor there, but it does disrupt that like smooth texture of the squash just a little bit. Overall, like I would make this one again for sure. These recipes, they really were kind of a nice surprise. I of course expected to like a cheesy potato casserole, but it turned out like even more delicious than I expected. Sometimes just throwing a little crunchy buttery topping on something can elevate it so much. And I think that's what happened in this case. That very simple two ingredient salad dressing, 
really packed a punch and the squash. How delightful. I hope this video sparked your interest in maybe trying some new side dishes at your upcoming holiday dinners or brought back memories of a recipe that you haven't made in a long time. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to see some additional content that I don't post here on YouTube, you can join me over on Patreon. I'll include a link to join in the description down below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.